The views and opinions of this program are those of the host guests and callers. There is substantial risk of loss in trading futures and options, which you should carefully consider prior to trading. Today's episode of Market Talk is brought to you by Growmark FS. Keeping up with the latest in ag is a challenge, to say the least, but there are experts nearby ready to help. You'll find them at your local FS. You can trust them to bring you customized agronomic grain and energy solutions bored of the latest thinking. That's because FS specialists receive continuous training that keeps them current on the latest trends, practices, and technologies. So you'll get local expertise that's both exceptional and up-to-date. Visit FSSystem.com to learn how FS is bringing you what's next. We saw a fairly mixed bag of trading on the day Monday as we kick off the first full week of June. Wheat found a little bit of green on the screen. Quarter beans a little bit lower. Cattle higher. Hogs a little lower. What do we make of the uh, mixed bag of trade? We got plenty to talk about. Joining us here on today's program, we welcome in John Heimberg with Total Farm Marketing. John, good to catch up with you again, my friend. I hope you had a uh, an awesome weekend. And you know, we come back in here on a Monday and. We started off mostly higher, and then just one thing led to another. Kind of a mixed bag on the session today. Yeah, very much so. Again, we kind of fell off those overnight highs, especially in the corn and the bean markets. And you know, and that's kind of all focusing on all the things that are out there, especially the weather and what's going to be coming down the road. Again, we continue to see those weather models keep pushing out there for some moisture. And they're on that 11th, 12th window. And we'll see if that comes true. I know that started here about a week back around the 7th, 8th, ninth window. So they kind of, hey, it's coming, but keep moving it back a few days. You know, then on top of that, you know, just talking to clients today, you know, if you just continue to look at the big picture of things, you know, we've got more bearish things in the grain markets for corn and soybeans than we got bullish. But obviously the bullish one being the weather can out trump everything overall. Uh, but again, so balance, I think, is a pretty big key here for producers and just kind of managing what's in front of us. And we got a good rally. Do we reward it? How do we bet, go forward? You know, the different types of things that we're working on with some of the guys today. Well, thinking about corn and soybeans, it felt like in both complexes, John, there was maybe some degree of farmer selling on Monday uh, and not just U.S. farmers, but South American farmers as well. We, we can't forget about that. That Safrina corn harvest starting up in Brazil. Um, it just felt like the recent rally, maybe a bit of a profit taking day uh, around midday to the close on Monday, John. You know, it did feel that way a little bit. Again, we did see some of the weather models for the mid-morning come in and continue to push a little more moisture in. So I think that helped out the cause. You know, but like you said, I, I had a few producers too. They had some $6 type targets. Those got hit on the overnight last night. Moving some of that old crop corn or if they have basis contracts, you got to get those kind of finalized here before the month ends. You know, some of those plays kind of came in here with this, you know, 60, 50 cent move higher in the corn market. You do really need to reward it. I mean, again, we still have a large supply pile at this time and we need to kind of make sure we're preparing ourselves for it here. You know, but as I said to those guys who made some sales today, you know, let's keep a little paper over top just in case all of a sudden those weather models fall apart. We want to have something as an insurance policy over top. So that was some of what we we're working on today. Or if you still feel bullish about the weather or you're concerned about the bushels or your production, at least make sure those puts are in play underneath here. Again, talking about that balanced approach, you know, you got to reward yourself when you get a 60 cent rally in any market, even though we have the potential to go higher is still there if the weather doesn't cooperate. But at the same time, if things straighten out a little bit and these forecast models do come in, you know, plus especially with that USDA report coming here on Friday, you know, we could set ourselves up for a fairly interesting start to next week. So I want to make sure we're at least prepared for that. Well, and looking at Dee's corn after the close on Monday, settling at 537. So a little below kind of that, that 540 level. I know a lot of folks are watching on the chart. Does that concern you at all closing back below that level and then you know old crop july closing just just a couple cents below six as well on the day monday john uh, the price action in general was very disappointing today in the core market especially a week kind of hanging in there and getting a little boost with a few penny gain you know but watching corn come well off those overnight highs it just kind of felt like the sellers said okay we're good here let's flip this thing over you know and then closing near the bottom of the range that technically leaves us a bad signal Probably brings a little bit more overnight pressure, especially if the crop condition numbers come in within it, you know, kind of in line with expectations. 
you know, we are expected to see things come down a couple percentage points in terms of good to excellent reflecting the weather. As long as it's not a major miss by any stretch and we can see some follow through selling just because of the way the price action kind of ended today and the momentum of the afternoon was really kind of to the negative side in both corn and beans. Well, John, thinking about balance, I know you mentioned this and you mentioned this to me off the air as well. Uh, it feels like this is that time window where, you know, farmers, traders, we're all we're watching the weather. We got this uh, supply demand report coming up on Friday. You might be behind on some sales or et cetera, et cetera. So just looking at that marketing plan, especially ahead of a WASDI report and then the potential for this rain coming in, it really feels like a very important time to just get the pencil out and, and just go over things again and make sure that you're balanced in your in your marketing plan, doesn't it? Very much so. I mean, this is a window where you don't want to get cute. Okay, in terms of how things go, you know, if you got some targets and you're close to getting them filled, get them done. You know, like just like today too, picking up some put strategies underneath the new crop corn. You know, it's like, well, can we wait for a penny or two? No, let's just you want them, let's do them. Because if you don't, next thing you know, the market's going to move away from you, and you don't get anything done. You know, again, the cost of doing uh, cost of doing nothing can outweigh the the small cost of you know getting something put together here if things do kind of fall one way or another. So, you know, that's where, like I said, you don't get cute this time of year. You keep your risk minimized in terms of what you got in front of you. Again, make sure you're looking at different scenarios. You know, first off, if this weather does come into play, it's going to happen within the next handful of weeks. So, again, you know, shorter term of calls and ownership over top of any sales here. You know, let's see if we catch the weather market early. You know, but again, longer term, you know, on the put side, you know, we got a long way for this to go. That way, if the market does take off, you know, we can come back at the end of the year and still have those puts still on the board to hold or protect for us. So, you know, that's kind of how I'm balancing things out in that regarding and just kind of saying, you know, if things are going to move one way, what do we got in place? If things move a lot, what do we got in place? And the same thing on the downside, you know, and again, just minimize some of those types of positions that can kind of blow up on you if this market decides to go screaming one way or another. John, looking at the wheat trade, that was a bit higher pretty much across the board on Monday. I know we have more Black Sea concerns out there than we have crop concerns in China. I know the rains let up, but still quality uh, reductions could be seen there. It just feels like there's a, there's a bit of a concern out there. This uh, world wheat supply could be tighter than anticipated uh, come Friday on that uh, June WASDI report, John. Yeah, that's going to be an interesting number to see. And, and, you know, and again, the mainstream media kind of jumped up and down a little bit this week. Started on Friday, had just had a report that, you know, global weather conditions could have an impact on wheat production globally in certain regions of the world between the, you know, China, India weather forecast, what's happening in Australia. Europe is sitting very, very dry right now. You know, maybe it's a spot this, you know, this market needs to put a little bit of premium in. Again, we're pretty oversold here. So that's a big piece of this. And then, you know, money's just might be looking for a safe place to go that looks undervalued. And maybe that's the wheat market. You know, the thing is with wheat, there's a lot of moving parts. You got a lot of different producers out there that are cranking product out one time or another. So it feels like there's some form of supply. Obviously, you still got the Black Sea issues that come into play from time to time in terms of how much impact that's going to have. But, you know, there's just a little bit of buzz, and you see it in some of the articles that are coming through the news wires. And it may be just enough for a momentum trader to say, you know, hey, I want to get out of my shorts here. Let's buy a little wheat here. Kind of interesting to see what the open interest is and how the how the money is flowing. Are we closing out positions or we got some new buying moving in? Yeah, uh, in that regard. And then we'll see what Friday gives us with the report. Obviously, we know our winter wheat crop is going to be in tough shape. Again, watching the dry conditions. What's that done to the spring wheat in some of these regions? Uh, you're really counting on some moisture there. You know, it still sounds like Illinois is going to have a heck of a wheat crop from what we saw. You know, so there's some bushels out there. You know, but there's a lot of mixed bag of news in that wheat market. And again, today, that one felt like a little bit more squaring up, especially with the report coming and as oversold as that market's been. Export inspections. I know there's been a lot of uh, concern about demand destruction here in the grains. Anything stand out to you looking at this week's export inspections for Monday morning? You know, they're pretty much in line again. You know, we watched the corn side, a little over 1.1 million extra tons, higher end of the range, beans in a window now. We're not shipping many beans at all. You know, but beans right now, we're, right now we're still a little bit ahead of the USDA pace but we're narrowing that gap a little bit because we're not pushing the beans out. So that might lead to basically no reductions from the USDA on Friday. We'll see. 
Corn, we're behind the pace. We continue to be behind the pace. We're not getting that gap narrowed by much here at all. And then the sales just aren't on the books. You know, again, Friday, we expect to see that demand side on the export probably come down a little bit more, adding to the carryout for corn, you know, because with that South American crop coming, the, the biggest concern for me is going to be when do we see the U.S. producers step down into that Brazilian market in terms of buying some corn, bringing it up through the East Coast, because it's going to be more cost effective to do that. We've already seen that happen with wheat. We've already seen that happen with soybeans, at least in terms of bringing some imports in. And realistically, maybe at the prices where we are, given the issues in terms of production across the country, for we those southeastern corn importers, that might be the best route to go. And that, again, will be another negative on top of this corn market. And real briefly, crude oil, I know, backed off the highs on the day, but that weekend announcement of more production cuts from OPEC Plus, I know that's something to keep an eye on as well uh, here in this uh, broader market trade, John. Very much so. You know, again, that, there was expectations something would happen. Saudi Arabia needs prices of crude oil to be higher just to help function and, and you know, handle some of their expenses in terms of running some of these projects they're running. You know, so obviously that million, uh, million bushel per day, million barrel per day cut obviously just helps solidify that. Now we've had a pretty good turn off the lows here, maybe a little bit of profit taking going into that market, especially with a little bit weaker stock market and a pretty good week last week that maybe we just saw oil square up a little bit here today. There's just a pretty big supply gap out there. So that's kind of be interesting to see how that shakes out between the demand that's there, the bushel, the barrels that's available and how this market wants to handle this. Maybe this move maybe put us back towards that $80 oil level. Uh, a little bit more, uh, but again, still a little bit of a cautious point, obviously, with a lot of the geopolitical tensions that OPEC and OPEC Plus are dealing with and between, between themselves, just trying to figure out oil production. We're talking today with John Heimberg from Total Farm Marketing. John, let's look at livestock cattle. Uh, an okay day on Monday, moderately higher in both fats and feeders. I know last week, huge surge in cash prices, 7 to 10 higher, uh, and it feels like to me, Futures just got to play catch up here. Uh, what's your thoughts on this cattle trade right now? Yeah, we tried hard to play catch up last week, and we still hung in there pretty well today. You know, there's a couple times I glanced over, and it's like, oh, maybe we're fading out here. You know, we had a heck of a pop here. But, boy, with cash trade where it is right now, and then you look at the retail side. Midday today, you got choice carcasses over the 310 level, select pushing back to 300. You know, that still keeps some meat on the bone here for the Packers. You know, like that supply demand side is always just a concern point. It still feels like the U.S. consumer and consumer and the export side of it, too, is still moving that U.S. beef around and the numbers just aren't there. So the Packers are trying to find the, the supplies out there to meet that demand and it's just not happening. Therefore, we see the push higher in the retail values and that you know corresponds to the cash market. Now, we are getting pretty rich here. Now, I still got some upside targets. I still think the fundamentals are friendly. But, you know, it wouldn't shock me. We see some profit taking in a pullback, obviously, with the USDA report this week. If that comes in and hits that grain market again one way or another, that could be, you know, reflected opposite in the cattle market. So it's another one of those windows. I've talked about this before. You know, we get these runouts. Look at those longer term puts. Make sure you build some type of floor underneath this market. Leave the top side open. Again, having some type of fixed, uh, you know, hedge on top and here might still be against you if this market continues to push higher. So keep that flat price flexibility open. On the hog side, it feels like a, a mixed signals over there with uh, looking at the cash lower, cutouts higher. Just doesn't feel like this market knows necessarily which way to go after a fairly strong week last week, John. You know, and then throw the backside of the cattle trade into it. And I think that's been some of the problem in the hog market. You know, realistic, when you got cattle trading where it is and beef trading where it is, hogs usually would be the counter trade uh, at least and see some spillover support. But it just seems like as cattle climb, hogs get sold. Now, we got that little bit of a V bottom in. We consolidated at the top of last week's range today. So that's still encouraging. Like I said, retail value is showing a little bit of a pickup here. You know, maybe the biggest concern right now in the cattle market as well as the hog market, you're just keeping a close eye on those California ports and the situation going there. You know, that's an export hub that we move a lot of that product overseas into the South, Southeast Asia and China windows. You know, if something prolonged were to develop there, could that back up the supplies? Maybe that's what was hitting the front end port contracts a little bit here today. So that's something that's definitely a watch and see in terms of how that plays out because it definitely feels like we got a little bit of a slowdown in those ports. 
anything like nothing like we saw in the past where we had the major disruptions but at least at this stage you know it's a watch and see and make sure nothing really occurs again could back up those pork supplies and we need to keep them moving great observation how about the dairy market trade any notes there as we look at monday's action you know every time we feel like that market's starting to get a little footing something comes back and kind of kicks it in the tail again and you know here we are i thought we had a double bottom in we're trying to see those cheese prices rally but again they just kind of rolled right over at the end of last week got no movement on the block price today at a dollar 40. you know that's some of the lowest prices we've seen in a long long time for block cheese just still reflects that that demand's not there we got ample milk supplies at this time frame you know, so again, till that cheese price starts moving and even the butter price today, cash price is down again. That just really puts a lot of pressure on that spot contract and the front month contracts as milk continues on its slippery slope here. John, always appreciate the time and insight. Before we let you go, any final thoughts, anything you want to reiterate for folks here today? You know, again, a lot of things moving, a lot of different pieces of the puzzle. When your marketing plan comes out, I'm just going to reiterate, stay balanced, keep it simple here. You know, just understand what your positions are, what you're doing, what your goals are, and then just let it shake out, you know, and prepare either way. You know, you still got time to adjust. You know, just look at where the numbers are and what works best for you overall. You know, again, the grain markets are negative in terms of its news with the exception of this weather. And if those models come through by the end of the week and we start seeing some moisture develop, that premium that we've added in here will start to disappear. So we need to make sure we're at least prepared for that and take advantage of it here in a potentially higher supply year. Well, John, if folks want to reach out and get some advice from you and the team there at Total Farm Marketing, what's the best way to do that? Sure, give me a call, 800-334-9779. Shoot me an email at johnh at totalfarmmarketing.com. And again, that website of ours, totalfarmmarketing.com. A lot of great information for you. Feel free to reach out. Love to have a conversation with you. Always great to catch up with you, my friend. Have an awesome week, and we will talk to you next week. John Heinberg with Total Farm Marketing. Thanks for joining us today.